With GitHub, we can save our secrets like credentials and keys in the secret store and reuse them in GitHub Actions. Let's see how secrets work in GitHub and how we can manage them. This is a 3 Minutes Friday. Hi everybody, welcome back to Code Dave and welcome to a new episode of the 3 Minutes series. In each episode, I will try and explain a concept, showcase a product or service, or yet try and teach you something and all in just three minutes. Short videos, big value, hopefully. Today we talk about managing GitHub secrets, but let's start the clock and get into it. First thing we have to say is that there are three levels of secrets. We have the secrets at organization level, the secrets at repository level, and the ones at environments level. The organization secrets allow you to share secrets to different repositories without the need of duplicating them. They can also be scoped to specific repositories or used in all of them. Remember that this is not available in the free plan. Repository secrets instead, as the name says, are scoped to a single repo. They can be used to override the organization-defined secrets when using the same name, and are available on the free plan. Finally, the environment secrets. They are scoped to a specific environment and can override both organization and repo secrets. They are available on the free plan, but only for public repos. Feature-wise, the three levels are equivalent. However, they have a different hierarchy and precedence. Organization secrets are, of course, defined at the highest level. Then we have the repository secret underneath, and finally, the environment secrets. When the GitHub Action Engine needs to access those secrets, it will first look into environments. If there is no environment secret defined with that name, it will fall back to the repository secrets and use one of those. And again, if there's no secret with that name in the repo secrets, then GitHub Action will fall back again to the organization secrets, if you are in the context within an organization. If no secret with that given name is found in any of the three levels, then of course you will get an error. Let's quickly see now how to create, update, and manage those secrets. Let's start with the organization secrets. Let's go to settings, and if you scroll down, we have secrets. In here, we can see the secrets we already have. And as you can see, we can only update or remove a secret. The reason for this is that once you save a secret, you will not be able to access its value anymore. Not manually, at least. Only the GitHub Actions engine will be able to consume the secret. You can always update a secret, but again, you will be able to change its value, but not to see the previous value. Save changes, and here we go. To create a new secret, just click on New Organization Secret. You can give it a name and a value. And then you can decide if you want this to be applied to every repository you have, only to private repository, which is the default, or if you want to select the repositories that this secret will be applied to using this selection. You can select as many as you want, update and add. And here we have our new secret. You can anytime update the repositories you want to apply a secret to just from the update screen. Let's move on now to the repo secrets. Once again, just go to the settings, scroll down to secrets, and here we have our repository secrets. Once again, we can update, remove, but not view the value. And once again, just click on new repository secret to create a new one. Since these are repo secret, it's automatically scoped to the single repo we are in, so there's no selection for it. Finally, let's talk about the environment secrets. Just click on environments, create or select one of the environments, scroll down, and here you have your environment secrets. Needless to say, again, we can only update or remove the existing secret and, of course, add a new secret. If we go back to our secrets, you can see that we have two secrets with the same name, subscription underscore ID, one at the repo level and one at the environment level, and this is to achieve the override. Whenever I'll use this secret within the production environment, this secret will be used, while this other secret will be used in any other environment or any other instance of the actions execution. Let me know in the comment section below how you manage your secrets on GitHub, and more importantly, if you want me to cover in another video the integration between GitHub and the third-party secrets providers like Azure Key Vault. Also, you may want to check out this video over here in which I go in depth into the GitHub Actions environments. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.